Hey everyone, it's Area of Effect with another out-of-the-box build, uh, mostly. You might see different variations of this build coming very soon to you with the Necrom update and the change to Storm Masters 5-piece uh, bonus, only applying to monsters and no longer applying to players. Heavy attack builds are going to be, well, changed a bit. And if you're looking for a new heavy attack combo, this build is just for you. I've done a ton of testing. Check out the stat screen, 30K max magic, a 30K max health, almost 5K spell damage, decent pen with our breach, 40% crit and really decent resistances. We are going with the Bewitched Sugar Skulls on this build. We want max resources. Want to get that magic up. Usually I go with the Orzorga's Smoke Bear Haunch for PvP, but Bewitched on this one. The Serpent is our Mundus. We want that extra stam recovery. This is primarily for PvP as well. PvE and PvP, this build works, but you want that stam recovery in PvP. Um, Vampire Stage 3 or Stage 4, we want that undeath passive that mitigates damage as we lose health. And we don't really hit get hit very hard with the cost uh, increases on our skills because we're a heavy attack build, primarily doing heavy attacks. We picked Dark Elf. Uh, we got that max mag and max stamina by 1900. You could pick a high elf, by the way, for that 5% damage mitigation while channeling. Uh, resist Flame, that's going to help us while being a vampire. Help us with that Lava Whip uh, from all those Dragon Knights out there. And the last one is Ruination. Increases our weapon and spell damage by an additional 258. Now, weapon and spell damage won't help scale up our heavy attacks, as heavy attacks don't care about weapon and spell damage, but it does help with our healing and our other skills. This build takes a huge upgrade next patch as well, with three additional buffs we are not having getting and i didn't display in pvp earlier major protection from toppling charge the extra healing from the restoring focus and sun sphere increasing all class damage by five percent so the first on the two bar setup we have the vatishran back bar we cast rally okay we get weapon and spell damage on command with rally where we you know would typically have to use degeneration on a templar or jabs we get that weapon and spell damage up, and we get stats with Vigor and with Rally. And you could pick the Restoring Focus, the Restoring Rune that costs stamina to get this uh, get this buff up quicker. But what happens is when you build up five stacks and you do a heavy attack, look here. See the earth and the rock come flying out, not the bear. We'll get to that in a minute. And the beautiful purple and pink debuff on them. But it's the stacks, you gain five stacks. See the, the red symbol looks like an ax between my health and stamina bar. Now I heavy attack, and I did the Dawnbreaker as well. All this at once with the back bar, but we're not really sitting on the back bar. That's just a chance there to do a big AOE stun burst combo to a group I love. We'll show that later. But let's jump into the rest of the gear. The, the front bar, the lightning staff. Lightning staff of the sergeant. We have a double dot uh, poison with a double dot health on there which i found to be the best you don't want a berserker glyph for spell and weapon damage on this one like i typically would you could use crusher or you could use the damage and restore health glyph uh but i like the double dot healing and damage on that one we had a precise trait keeping us at 40 percent crit and sergeants obviously the fifth trait's what we're going after when you deal damage with a heavy attack you'll gain sergeant focus you build up stacks 622 each stack so times four ends up being around 2,400 um, extra damage. This is per tick on your heavy attacks, but it ends up being more than 2,400 because of the way things scale and combine and multipl multiplicatively. Is that a word? Um, the, the monster set here I love. It fits the theme perfect with the gold, but most importantly, it deals shock damage and it hits a, uh, a big wave out from a gold bear and everybody that gets hit gets affected with major vulnerability um which is going to increase their damage taken by 10 percent by everybody even your groups uh group members so arch druids our arch druid devrick's uh monster set now watch when i hit him even at the, the very beginning of a heavy attack there's the bear came out he did a shock wave of shock and everybody is glowing there with major vulnerability, increasing their damage taken, of course, by our heavy attacks as well, 
by 10%. Um, so now the other pink and purple smoke comes from the other five piece that we're going to show in just a second. Uh, it's minor vulnerability. So they're getting major vulnerability and minor vulnerability, and they kind of look the same. I, I wish they didn't, so you could kind of tell which one they have, which one they don't. We've got the arm cops for a medium piece, um, and we've got the light helmet. Now, the other five-piece set, other than Sergeant, is Invaluable Aether. Crit, Major Slayer for PvE, you know, 5% additional damage, dungeons, trials, arena, weapon and spell damage, a double fifth trait, critical chance, and fifth trait, heavy attacks, deal an additional, I think it will scale to 900 when gold, an additional 900 with the fully charged heavy attack, they'll get minor vulnerability. But you get that immediately, that, that extra 900, you get that immediately rather than trying to proc it for a certain time frame with Storm Masters and maybe you do a few pulls, you don't get it yet. You get this immediately and I love that. It's right there, it's ready in PvP, which is nice when the target isn't a boss who you've already been on for a whole minute and you're just sitting in a good uptime with Storm Masters. You start a new fight, you hit them off balance with, with toppling charge, you start that first pull, and Infallible Aether is ready, on command, working just like Archdruid, Archdruid Devrix Monster set, and you finish that first pull, they have minor vulnerability as well. So again, this is the two bar option. We have a one bar option with Oaken Soul, um, but the two bar option I thought was far superior. That's based on the back bars, buffs, and healing a lot more survivability. I will say, and keep your eyes open for my next video, uh, the Infallible Mage set comes out of Ethereum Archive. It's a trial where you're required to have 12 people to progress forward beyond the first boss uh, and definitely to the first chest. Well, I'm gonna show a way to kind of cheat and get that first chest by yourself solo and farm that dungeon. Not just that dungeon, but Sanctum Ophidia and Hellra. These pieces all come out of this chest and how to get there and just farm it over and over again. It's always there, and I'll show you guys how to do that. The first skill was elemental weakness. We want that minor vulnerability, that, that uh, breach, that burning, and that minor main that we give them. But we really get that breach out of it, putting our penetration at around 12, 13K. The next skill I have slotted is inner light. I did this more for the crit and the, and the max magicka. You could slot the other skill, Sunfire, that procs your crit, but I wanted less to worry about, less buttons to press. Um, you know, Oak and Soul, you don't have to press anything. You just pull the right trigger and everything's there. Your crit, your major resolve, your major ward, all that. I wanted to have as little to worry about as possible when just holding that right trigger for you guys, for myself, for the biggest uptime on sergeants not losing those stacks. Okay, so I slotted uh, inner light for that. Now, toppling charge, um, you lunge on in, it deals damage, and it stuns them for three seconds. I love that. But most importantly, on command, it knocks them off balance. That is crucial because off balance, even though it doesn't say it anywhere in the game, increases your heavy attack damage by 70% for seven seconds. And then there's a cooldown. They can't be knocked off balance again for another 15. Look off balance now and look at the damage as he's off balance. And if he goes uh, on cooldown where he's no longer off balance, the damage is going to be down 70%. So that in PvP is great because a new target, you start with that toppling charge. They're off balance immediately on command. Honor the Dead, it's a big bursty heal. 11,000 health to you or an ally depending on who needs it more or who's in front of you. But uh, we need this big bursty heal. We have um, plenty of heals in the back bar as well, but we want this on the front bar to have immediately when we need it. The last skill uh, is the Jesus Beam. And this one is, is definitely, you know, you, you go in PvP, you need this. PvE, you might not. Um, you just stay stacked on the heavy attacks, but in PvP, you want to have that ability to finish because people can come up from their lower health pretty quick. Um, we picked the morph that gives you healing back, but you don't want to cast this unless they are under, you know, to be honest, 40-30% health. It starts to damage scale at about 50% health, but when they get down low to that 20% health range, this is really going to burn them down. Um, and it's an insane skill. It works with the theme as well. I mean, we're the we're the golden boy here. So, but anyway, uh, yeah, let's uh, 
jump to the next skill, the ultimate temporal guard. We have this one slotted, so we have minor protection at all times when we're sitting there pulling the trigger on the right trigger, a heavy attacks. But we also can teleport. Um, oh, let me show the passive real quick. You get this nice Sigic Order skill, uh, Shield. It'll help mitigate 5,000 damage. Every 10 seconds shows up, and it's nice. It looks great, by the way. But check out what the ultimate will do for us. You can round a corner, drop off an edge. You can cast the ultimate. Your resources and location are back where you started. I just love that. It's a great way to stay alive in PvP. Now, the skills on the two-hand bar. First one, Solar Barrage. I love this skill. It's going to take a buff next patch. We're going to get Sun Sphere out of it, which will increase our class damage by 5%. That's going to be toppling Charge, Crescent, Sweep if we've got it, Jesus Beam. But what this one does, when you cast it and you're in range, it deals an AoE around you, which looks cool. It pulses out. But it also is going to give you in power for 22 seconds. That's amazing, especially in PvP or PvE even. We go on your back bar, you cast this for 22 seconds. You don't have to worry about it. We do have inner light that allows us to do that in the front bar as well. But I love this solar barrage. Resolving vigor, a big stamina health over time, five seconds over 22,000. But it's also going to give us minor resolve, which is going to increase our resistances by 3,000. This also works well as a stamina ability to help us build up stacks with the Vatishran two-hand um, rally proc. The next skill, extended ritual. This one is imperative. It's a big circle of healing. It immediately removes five negative effects from you. You can get hit with a Dawnbreaker, just cast this, no longer have to worry about that extra damage over time. Um, get rid of those Daedric curses or haunting curses. But yeah, this skill, it's a big circle. You stay in it, your allies get it, and uh, offers them a synergy as well so they can purify. Then we've got the next skill was Rally. We um, talked about we need this for the uh, Vatishran, but also, um, well, real quick before we jump into Rally, you could replace this with Living Dark if you wanted to have a heal that kind of moves with you, that procs off of the direct damage. It's that big uh, sphere. It looks cool, but honestly... Um, I thought that Extended Ritual was better than Living Dark. But back to Rally. Uh, again, major result, uh, major uh, brutality, major sorcery. This is how we get it. Even our spell damage goes up from it, even though it costs stamina. We get that minor endurance for extra stamina recovery, something the Oaken Soul Ring would give us as well. Then we get a big heal at the end of Rally. Now you can cast this prior to the timer uh, running out. And spam it for a heal and a heal, or wait halfway through and get a you know a decent size heal, or wait till it expires on its own and get a huge heal. But this skill I love on this build, it allows us to buff prior to an enemy. Degeneration requires an enemy to buff up. Um, the next skill, channeled focus. We picked the magic morph. You could pick the one that restores stamina, but both of them are going to give you major resolve, increasing your resistance by about 6,000. The difference between the two is one restores Magicka and one restores Stamina. This skill is taking a big buff next patch. You will be healed even while out of the, uh, the Rune's Circle and healed for even more while in the Rune's Circle. Um, if you pick the Stamina Morph, it will also help build up more stacks of Vatistrian's five-piece um, or two-piece bonus. So. Again, this is another buff coming next patch that you don't see here. The The ultimate on this bar has to be Dawnbreaker. I mean, you could pick Crescent Sweep, but I love the, the AoE stun with Dawnbreaker. Big gold glow it matches as well. Big bursty damage. Um, almost 15,000, and then an additional damage over time after the hit and the stun. And as I showed earlier, you get those five stacks of Vatistrans ready, and you hit him with Dawnbreaker, and you'll get... Uh, or you, yeah, you hit him with the heavy attack and finish with Dawnbreaker, you'll get a big burst. The bear, the Dawnbreaker, the heavy attack, and the Vatishram proc all at once, and it's very nice. Again, I said you could pick Crescent Sweep. It costs half the, the cost pretty much, so you'll have it more often, but it doesn't deal a stun uh, or as much damage. All right, for those of you who would like to go with the one bar Oaken Soul setup, this part is for you. This is how we put this uh, this option together. We still have the Lightning Staff of the Sergeant on the front bar, which is our only bar, 
Um, it is precise, just like I said before, extra crit chance. But now we have the hat of infallible Aether because we can no longer wear a monster set and I'll show that here. Um, not a two piece set at least, but the one piece, now you have some options. You could pick um, something like Zahn for more crit chance. Um, the Archdruid gave us more penetration. Grothar would give more Max Magicka. Maybe you want to go up with your resistances a little more. It gives you some freedom to uh, basically do what you want with that one piece. You could do it with the helmet, by the way, to get kind of a, a cool one piece monster identity. Um, some of those helmets look pretty cool. That's just for looks, but I did the shoulder because I had the hat of Infallible Aether. Oaken Soul Ring. You guys already know what this is. Everything that you get minor berserk, minor courage. Major Brutality, Major Sorcery, Major Prophecy, Major Savagery, Minor Force, which increases your crit damage by 10%, and so on. Um, so that's also a great a great way to get all those buffs without having to cast everything. The skills on the, uh, the one bar, we need our Breach, so we got our Elemental Susceptibility. We need our Minor Resolve, Minor Ward, and the Heal from Vigor. Um, we need Toppling Charge for knocking them off balance. That's key for that 70% additional damage we need that big bursty heal um and we need our jesus beam now this one actually you could swap if you wanted uh i, I hate that on the one bar setup i don't have the extended ritual for the five negative effects purification so you could put that on or you could put on power of the light by the way which will give him minor breach uh stacking up with your major breach um so they have <laughs> basically nine thousand uh, strip down resistances and then uh, you know but you want to have a Dawn's Wrath ability uh, Jesus Beam or Power of the Light will give you this minor sorcery that you need as they are both a Dawn's Wrath ability but uh, that strips them down a bit more Power of the Light if you wanted to it loads up and then it ends up bursting at the end multiplying the damage that they have taken during its effect on them but anyway I did it here you can see with minor uh and major breach power of the light is slotted and uh the ultimate was dawnbreaker now on the one bar i, I would not recommend doing the sigic because you want something that's going to be offensive um so dawnbreaker smiting i believe is the way to go for that stun and everything that goes with it um but and the ultimate generation that goes with it from having a fighter's guild ability slotted but anyhow uh, when you kill a player but the other ultimate options crescent sweep um it's going to be available a ton especially with the minor heroism that comes with the oaken soul ring shooting star i showed a minute ago um is going to give you you know a passive that's going to increase your max magicka by two more percent and your recovery by two percent and then like i just showed the fighter's guild passives so there's passives that you're going to get out of different ultimates slotted but I feel like ultimately, huh, see what I did there? Ultimately, the Fighter's Guild uh, Ultimate Dawnbreaker is the way to go. And uh, again, you also end up getting uh, an, an Ultimate Generation proc for uh, having a Fighter's Guild ability slotted per player you kill, um, which just helps keep it going. Um, again, other options were Crescent Sweep, Solar Disturbance even, but you know, they're not really going to stay in it in PvP as much as you'd like them to. Crescent Sweep, again, costs less, but, you know, anyway, and doesn't stun, but it's, it's something you could throw out more often. Going into the champion point distribution now, Fighting Finesse, this is going to increase our critical damage and healing done by 8%. We need that, especially with the 40% crit. Exploiter, your off-balance enemies will take 10% additional damage. That is right away on command with toppling charge. Master at arms, your direct damage done by 6%. That is for two reasons. One, your final pop of your heavy attack pull. And every bit of splash damage that the lightning staff deals when you're fully charged heavy attacking a primary target. The splash damage, for some reason, is direct damage over the secondary targets. Weapon de uh, weapons expert increases our heavy and light attack. Obviously, we got to have this by 20%. Um, it's just the way you got to go. Um, you could, the backstabber 
if you were uh, in PVE and you knew that there was going to be a tank with aggro keeping your uh, the enemies, you know, the bosses back to you, you could deal more damage with backstab or 10% more damage. If not, uh, Thaumaturge is a good one for your damage over times. It's not going to be your final pop, but it will be your damage over time, long pulls on your heavy attacks. And the, the other one I show is Reaving Blows if you're doing more of a solo build you get healing back a lot of healing back for a lot of damage on the red tree boundless vitality 1400 max health that keeps us over 30k max health fortified increases our resistances by 1700 that's going to keep us at like 26 27 000. rejuvenation 90 health magicka and stamina recovery i liked this one you don't get much health recovery as a vampire but stamina and magicka and then same thing here with Sustained by Suffering, all three resources. It is good to have some coming back to you. Um, there are some other you know skills you could use in slot there, but those are what I thought was best um, all around. Well, that's going to wrap up the CP distribution and also wrap up this build, the Infallible Archdruid build. If you like this build and you want to see more, head on over to my channel. I've got plenty of content on there. Builds of all styles and types, stamina, magicka, damage dealers, tanks and healers, and a lot of content on there that's not build related whatsoever, tips and tricks. And I've got one on the way on how to do this chest farm, no boss fights, in and out, and farm all three trials by yourself. But if you like this video, please like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment on what you thought or what you would do differently. As always, thanks for watching. Area of Effect, signing out.